I always thought that photography should be fun, and if it was not, it should at least earn me some money. And if it did neither of the two, it should then at least substitute for psychotherapy. Contact sheets are mostly a waste of money, I find. The smart boys know this, and they shoot in color, most of the time anyway. 99.9% .9 of the frames on a contact sheet are the mistakes one makes while photographing. Because it is a waste of money, I love them. There are things in life we must do just because we find them unprofitable. Also, contact sheets are private. They belong to me, whereas photographs, once they are out of my hands, take on a life of their own. My most recent contacts are made in the, in the revolution in Romania. They are full of contradictions, I find. I think of myself as a man of peace, and yet I seem to love violence. In Bucharest, people were being killed around me. One got a bullet in the head and was dead. Yet what went through my head at the time? If I am exposed to long, I would be dead next to him. Then I was also thinking of the famous Bob Kappa picture on the Spanish Civil War showing a di dying soldier throwing up his gun, that great dramatic moment. So I waited, and I waited, and I waited to get that picture. From behind me, some Romanian screamed at me to get back. He said, this is not El Salvador. I guess he had seen a lot of TV footage on El Salvador. What I like about this contact sheet is how it shows times do change. In the 1967 war between the Arabs and the Israelis, a euphoria seemed to follow the first days of victory. Then. The Israelis thought their conflicts had now come to an end and peace was here at last. That's what they thought. Well, we now know better. Here am I on the battlefield, and here are some Palestinians on a battlefield picking it over. And, and here in Jerusalem we see an Israeli army patrol returning with their loot. And in this picture, is a religious Jew holding his hat so it won't blow away. Holding his hat is about the only thing that hasn't changed over the years. One more war picture. I was visiting German relatives, farming peasants who had lived on their land for generations. They told me of the, of the witches in their village and pointed out one that lived near their house. Then they said it was forbidden to mention such things in public. Afterwards, I went to the cemetery that contained their dead, good soldiers who had died for their fatherland. I did a book on black people in America, and it had to do with people like Martin Luther King returning home after receiving the Nobel Peace Prize. A generation after I had made the picture, someone in the New York Magnum office framed it and hung it on the wall. Then maybe a year after that, a black fellow in the office told me he had done it, and only recently found out that I had made the picture. I was now something special to him and he asked if I had really stood so close to King. It then dawned on me that, yes, I had really stood close to King, and I had the photograph to prove it. The Louisiana, USA printed over the electric door, colored tear. The God said, what do you want wasting time looking at colored? Hans reached out to me from the cells. Help me, a voice said. You, you, I need a lawyer. 
I've been here three months waiting for a trial, calling to me as I passed along the cell blocks. No one knows where I am. Tell my family where I am. You, I'm innocent. Out of the shadows, a voice said to me, I cannot live here. It will be a bloodbath. Yeah, a bloodbath. The guards watched me suspiciously from their chairs in the office. Desegregate this place, it will be blood. Mixing white men with animals. Can't make us do that. The guard said, when it gets too crowded in the colored tiers, we try weeding out the hardened homosexuals and separating them from the newcomers. I wanted to know the black city in my city. I knew black artists, dancers, actors who were living where I lived. And now I visited the neighborhoods they were escaping from. Who owns the city? Who owns this photograph I made? People like it, editors like it. It has been used as a poster to advertise the little joys of life. And sometimes I wonder if my camera is not pretending to be God. South Carolina. What you'd be doing here with that camera, mister? Don't be fooling around here. We ain't in no good mood. You're looking at unemployed, hungry men. Some been sitting here for weeks waiting for work. It's getting close to shutting time. Won't be no work for us here today, mister. Don't be fooling around here. We ain't no good mood. I did a book on religion and picked the chosen people since I considered myself one of them, though I never understood why I had been picked. For months I lived in Jerusalem with people who looked like my grandparents. What these people thought of me, I never knew, but they couldn't throw me out as I was a member of the tribe. I went into their inner sanctums. I danced and sang and prayed hour after hour, after hour until one day I said, enough, and whipped out my camera and clicked off 11 frames. Someone caught me, winked, and said, enough. The question is, just what is a photograph? The Jewish God commands us not to make or worship craven images. Well, says a good Talmud student, is a photograph a craven image? Not if you look at it from the backside or from the sides. What do you see? Nothing. Only from the front is there something to see that perhaps could be interpreted as God commanded. But, and buts are big in the Jewish religion, only a fool would think a piece of paper is a cow or the real thing. And who wants to be a fool? That's how my argument went. And most people I photographed agreed with me. A photograph is not the real thing. Homicide in the garage of a lavish apartment building. This had all the markings of a mafia killing. It was explained to me that the mafia hired skilled lawyers to advise on such things. The man had been shot three times in the back of the head. In order to convict, the state would have to find the three guns three men who did the killing and then prove which of the three bullets actually killed the man and who fired which gun.
the establishment magazine, the London Sunday Times, asked me to do a story on violence. I photographed what I thought violence meant to me. If I could not open a window because of pollution, that was violence to the pers person, I thought. And graffiti was violence to the eyes, and a lack of trees in the city was violence to the mind. Anyway, that was the story I sent to London. Afterwards, they sent me a telegram saying, great, loved the story, but needed more blood and gore. I then went out and photographed over 50 homicides. They just loved it. Over the years, I learned the ins and outs of working with the police. I can only conclude there is a kind of madness when a sane, grown-up man walks around with a gun. Yet I'm not against it. One dull night, an officer brought in a puppet. It was real fun. The puppet asked questions of fellow police officers, even of the puppeteer himself. In the end, those who did not give satisfactory answers were shot by the puppet. <laughs>